So in today's session, we're going to talk about uh, something interesting and uh, more conceptual in nature, something called as uh, leverage, right? And then uh, we'll try and decode uh, how does leverage work. I'm assuming this is a concept that a lot of us already know about. Uh, we'll just take a few examples to try and understand uh, the concept of leverage and how that uh, impacts uh, companies, their share prices, their uh, you know earnings, and so on and so forth. Uh, the term leverage basically comes from the concept of uh, lever, right? What does a lever do? A lever typically amplifies uh, power, right? Or force. You basically push on one side and, uh, you know, there's an amplification on the other side depending on where the fulcrum is, right? So uh, the seesaw concept, if you remember, right? If there's a, there's a fulcrum that's placed here and you push it down, you need lesser power to kind of put up stuff on the other side, right? So that's where the term leverage basically comes from because it ends up magnifying a company's uh, profitability or losses um, in times uh, when you know there is a volatility that plays out. So let's try and understand and decode these concepts as we go along. Standard uh, disclaimer, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell any securities or asset classes. This is purely for an educational uh, purpose. Let's quickly go ahead to the concept of uh, leverage, right? So what exactly is leverage? So uh, I'll broadly divide this into two parts, but basically if you look at a company's numbers and you see that they have a certain amount of sales and they have a certain amount of costs, if the costs don't move in line with sales, let's say the costs can then be divided into fixed costs and variable cost, if the costs are fixed, then uh, there is a magnification of what happens on the profitability front, right? So let's uh, let's basically put here as operating profit. And so let's say a company's sales is thousand, fixed cost is five hundred, you know, variable cost is let's say three hundred. We are looking at operating profit of two hundred, correct? Now let's first define what is fixed cost and what is variable cost. So this definition itself is not very a you know easy to understand, be easy to kind of comprehend from a company's financial statements because they don't tell you what is fixed and what is variable, right? You assume that certain amount of uh, costs are fixed, certain amount of costs are variable, but there's no clear cut definition around you know what is fixed and what is variable, right? Now if you consider uh, a company so a very simplistic understanding of fixed cost is that the cost that is fixed for a given capacity right so for a given capacity whatever is your cost as you you are actually running you know the operations that's your fixed cost right now you could argue you know for example if you take uh, a company like an airline it's uh, you know the whole leasing concept of aircrafts uh, where you have to pay for you know the aircraft you have to pay for the airport slots and all of that that's all fixed regardless of whether you fly or you don't fly right so that bit is like fixed cost regardless of whether you're flying or not flying then if you are flying you're using your capacity there's another set of fixed cost which is the which is going to come when you fly regardless of whether you have one person or 100 people sitting right so airlines would uh, then in a sense have uh, you know two kinds of fixed costs one is the standard fixed cost which will come regardless of whether you operate the business or not the second is a fixed cost that will come when you're operating the business at a certain capacity utilization and then um, you know over and above that there is a variable cost that comes because people are coming in coming in and playing out around that so airlines is a slightly different kind of a business but you know you could take hotels for example where whether or not people are staying in a hotel the costs are more or less fixed right now how does this play out let's say costs uh, sales go up by 20 percent well, let's go to 1200 right costs will remain fixed fixed costs so that's the trend. since sales have gone up by 20 percent and variable cost is 30 percent of sales variable cost is happening because of sales usually they move in tandem so this will also go up by 20 percent Right, this moved up by 20%. So this will move by 20%. So we have 360. So what do you get here? You get 860 and 340. What happened was a 20% increase in sales basically gave you a 70% increase in operating profit. 
right unfortunately the opposite side is also true which means if you have a scenario of let's say let's use a different color a minus 20 percent kind of sales and you get this to 800 fixed cost remain fixed so that 500 variable cost will go down by 20 percent so that becomes 240 what you're left with is 60 which is now a minus 70 percent number right so you see that the operating profit of the company if, if i was to calculate change in the operating profit and divided by change in sales that number is going to be 3.5 times right 3.5 times is what is happening you change this by two percent this changes by seven percent you change this by twenty percent this changes by seventy percent that's what is basically coming out here and um, that's basically the contour of uh, of you know how do you look at uh, the overall uh, overall scenario in that context right now uh, there's another formula that you must have studied in, in textbooks which comes around which is uh, you know there's this concept called contribution margin also known as throughput in certain industries so sales minus variable cost gives you what is called as contribution a uh, simple way to understand contribution is you know marginal profit that you will get by selling the next unit so the fixed cost doesn't change if you sell the next unit right so whatever you get on selling the next unit that's your contribution it goes straight to the bottom line in a sense right because it doesn't increase any cost so sales minus variable cost is contribution and that in this case is for example i calculate that contribution will be uh, 1000 minus 300 so that contribution here is 700 right now another way of basically calculating uh, you know the degree of operating leverage is contribution divided by contribution minus fixed cost that's the formula a lot of the textbooks give which is contribution divided by contribution minus fixed costs that will also give you 3.5 right so that's basically what is called as degree of operating leverage so that's one part of the story and that's like a straightforward understanding uh, that we would have with respect to you know uh, the the concept of leverage now let's turn to another kind of leverage because remember we are looking at fixed costs so the other component of leverage is financial leverage why does this come in is because you borrow money right if you borrow money you pay interest and interest is fixed cost you have to pay it regardless of you know whatever happens with your business so businesses who take a lot of loans i mean a simple example would be for example um, if you know how futures and trading works right that's the concept of leverage there so what what you do is basically you uh, borrow let's say 90 bucks and you put 10 of your own that's the broad concept right you just put in the margin money when you're buying so effectively you're borrowing the rest of the amount you put 100 rupees in a stock let's say the stock goes up by five percent so this becomes 105 right you'll return the 90 what is left is 15 when you sell it so now the stock went five percent returns 50 percent for money right because you leveraged it the same will work the opposite side if the stock basically goes down five percent so the stock goes to 95 you'll pay 90 you're left with five that's minus 50 percent on your money with a minus five percent move so that's the concept of financial leverage and once again uh, you know excessive leverage is a very dangerous concept in business purely because these costs kind of are fixed and uh, the concept of financial leverage is basically your uh, you know change in uh, pbt profit before tax divided by change in uh, a bit essentially right earnings before interest and tax in simple words change in final profits by change in uh, operating profits is what uh, you're looking at right now so how much interest as a component comes in and puts a pressure on a particular company is what uh, what the concept of financial leverage is together both the fixed costs on an operating level and uh, fixed costs on a financial level which is interest combined to create a big problem for firms that are there in the industries right take a look at a first certain set of examples so if you look at the aviation industry in India the approximate cost structure if you look at the various airlines uh, you know 31% of the cost is fuel 
24 percent is uh, others 14 is rentals uh, 12 percent is general and admin 10 percent is flight equipment maintenance 9 percent is uh, user charges right now some of these components are fixed let's assume an airline is actually flying its aircraft if they're flying the aircrafts then you know fuel is more or less fixed obviously more passenger capacity is going to use more fuel but largely there is a base amount of fuel that will go if you're let's say you have an aircraft flying from delhi to mumbai right uh, rentals of flight equipment is going to happen regardless of whatever happens right uh, flight equipment maintenance could go up or down but a little bit of it will still be fixed so that's where the problem comes in that you're not sure with some of these uh, these headers as to how much of it is fixed and how much of it is variable so you have to make certain assumptions but ballpark you can still get a sense or an estimate of what is going to be the fixed cost and what is going to be the variable cost fair enough uh, when you have operating leverage you have stock prices which move dramatically uh, you know in a dramatically volatile manner what you see here is Indian hotels so suddenly as this year we had this entire discussion about coronavirus led lockdowns uh, the price of Indian hotel stock went down right from 140 odd levels to all the way down to 70 65 odd levels right that's a 50% dip pure because your sales dipped and when your sales dipped and costs remain sort of sideways there is going to be a problem on the profitability right so the profits will dip and will dip more now obviously as things kind of stabilize we've seen in the past that you know the markets are opening up and everything so the stock also starts behaving uh, the same way on the upside as well look at an airline stock so someone like a spice jet now this is volatile even last year you uh, last to last year you had a couple of bouts of volatility where 140 becomes 60 goes back up to 140 goes back to 40 you know so there is a substantial chunk of volatility that you will see in any business with high fixed costs this you need to remember when you are analyzing these companies because it is extremely important that you don't just directly go and apply the concepts of price to earnings etc on these because uh, the markets do realize that you know if things change they can change dramatically and that's true with almost all kinds of businesses even commodity businesses for that matter if you go around uh, the stock market right now and look at companies that are in the commodity sector they're all doing you know in terms of stock prices the stock prices are jumping up and going up significantly why is that because costs are fixed and their sales are going up because commodity prices are going up globally and as commodity prices are going up you're finding this uh, this uh, as a very uh, you know lucrative time to be in that business which is why things are playing out the way they are right uh, we discussed about financial leverage this is Jayaprakash Associates uh, there's a company called Jayaprakash Associates who had a lot of debt on their books and so consequently uh, you know as they kind of piled up the debt somewhere around the stock price went first from 300 to somewhere around 50 bounced back to 150 went all the way down jumped again multiple times in between significant numbers and right now it's at four bucks right so uh, once again another story where a company would have taken excessive leverage and i'll show you some tables which will give us an idea on how this played out so let's search for uh, jay prakash associates and let's look at the balance sheet of this company and we'll realize that uh, if you look at the balance sheet in terms of borrowings uh, the borrowings just ballooned dramatically between uh, 2011 and 2015 somewhere from uh, you know 2009 the number was 19,000 crore went up to 75,000 crore in order to repay this they obviously had to uh, sell off a lot of their assets which uh, if you see fixed assets was 45,000 crore and now it's 9,000 crore that's because they had to sell all the all the you know profitable businesses uh, that they had obviously uh, when you look at the interest component uh, once you had 75000 crore of loans you will have 7500 crore of uh, approximately of interest and that resulted in you know substantial erosion of profits even though your operating profit could be uh, could be healthy your financial leverage basically uh, killed them right so that's something that we have uh, for these guys let's look at uh, some other businesses let's say this is uh, what we have is uh, cafe coffee day and uh, we've just kind of classified numbers in a in a certain format to kind of give us a sense of what is variable cost and what is fixed cost and now 
if you want to calculate the, you know the degree of operating leverage you could calculate it based on contribution margin divided by contribution minus the fixed cost once you identify these numbers right so you get a degree of operating leverage that is eight right now let's see what happens if your sales or revenue increases by 10 percent right let's actually parameterize it so this into one plus 10 percent what happens if this increases by 10 percent once this increases by 10 percent then you're going down and you know your variable cost which is total variable cost will also increase by 10 percent so this is into 10 percent right and i can get my contribution margin which is 46 minus 21 right fixed cost remains fixed so my operating income is contribution minus my fixed cost now sales remember increased by 10 percent if operating leverage is 8.1 then operating profit should have increased by almost 81 percent right let's see if that is true so this divided by this minus one and yep you get the same number 81.4 and yeah here you'll get 8.14 yeah so if sales increases by x percentage the operating profit will increase by operating leverage degree of operating leverage times the sales assuming of course we are able to kind of classify these costs correctly in real life that doesn't work but you get an approximate sense of what can happen and if i change this to minus 10 percent you will see an exact uh, impact on the earnings right so a small component especially for businesses where fixed cost is a large component of their business right and a small change in sales can basically wipe out you know significant chunks of your profits and that's why certain businesses are extremely volatile because you don't know when a small 10 percent dip in sales can come right that's true with even guys like indigo if you want to look at indigo obviously then you'll have to classify stuff but there are certain things in this which are going to be fixed costs there are certain things which would be variable cost and based on that you can identify what are your key fixed and variable costs and see what happens when businesses kind of encounter these kind of challenges right one point that you would want to kind of remember and uh, keep in mind is that whenever you are evaluating companies with uh, with uh, a high degree of operating leverage basically companies with high fixed cost and high debt right if you can see these companies you will see that these companies will typically have volatile earnings and because they have volatile earnings they are riskier than usual business cycles become riskier because uh, it's quite possible that you don't survive the next down cycle that comes along right so the market will eventually evaluate them based on those parameters so if you are doing a valuation exercise if you're doing an analysis exercise if you're doing a credit analysis exercise on this kind of a company you have to be extra careful looking at these data points right that's broadly it what we wanted to discuss in today's session uh, on operating leverage.